Good afternoon to everyone. We are uh, going to make a short clip today, short video. We apologize for this one being so delayed. Um, if you haven't noticed already, we actually have microphones. Ha <laughs> ha! So now we don't sound like we're at the end of a really long tunnel. Um, so just one of the many improvements that we are working on to make these videos a little bit easier to listen to and easier to watch. We have a new camera too. You can't see it because obviously it's looking at us, but hopefully your uh, picture is going to be a little clearer too. So um, we're going to be answering some questions from some viewers today. Um, we'll jump right in here. The first one is from Kelly. Kelly writes, she's a new beekeeper, started this year. Congratulations, Kelly. Uh, also has a small orchard of fruit trees that she needs to spray with a pesticide. She's hoping that we can tell her what is going to be safe for her fruit trees and for her bees. Um, so this one is could be a long one. I'm not going to go over all the details here, uh, but we'll put a link down below to uh, Michigan State University's. They have a link to their website that talks about pesticides and it will explain the toxicity level for the bees uh, for the different kinds of things that you can use, what time of year to apply those, what time of day to apply those. So help you get a little bit better idea of the kinds of things you might want to use. So we'll put that link down below. Go ahead and just click on that. Go over there, check that out. If you have any questions, of course, check, you know, email us back or message us back. And also, if anybody else has any links to any really helpful websites or other information related to pesticides and bees, please let us know so we can add it to future episodes too. Um. Our second question here comes from Sean, who has cons some concerns about ants on his frames. Uh, he tells us that he had opened up his hive and everything looked active and healthy, but he was a little concerned about the number of ants on the top of his hive. Um, for the most part, they're not a big deal. If you're concerned that there's too many of them, there's a couple different ways you can go. Um, you can put the legs of your hive stand in um, pails or empty paint cans or pie pans and put a little bit of water in there that way the ants can't climb up them. Um, you can use ant traps. Um, they are poisonous but the openings are too small so the bees can't get to them. They won't bother them. Um, there's also another route you could go if you don't want to use the poison. It doesn't work as fast but it still does work. You can sprinkle uh, cornmeal around the base of your hive. Um, and the, what, the way this works is the, bee, uh, the ants actually treat it as food and they'll eat it, but they can't digest it. So it does in fact kill them. It's just not as fast as poison. Um, you can also, some people grease the hive, the legs of their hive stand, um, or you could do like what I do and just sit there and squish any bug that's not a bee. <laughs> That's the easiest way to get rid of them. Right, right. Some people Quickly. put some people put cinnamon down around, I guess, oh, the cinnamon. base too on the ground. They say that works. So yeah, there's lots of ways. So if uh, try that out, if you have an ant problem that ends up getting really bad, uh, although or otherwise, also let us know if you have any uh, home remedies that you've tried that work really good, or some things you've heard that you've tried that didn't work so good. Uh, we'd be interested to hear more about that too. So before I get into the last one, I'm gonna uh, jump in here real quick. These are our nuke boxes, these plastic corrugated boxes that our bees come in in the spring. This is how anybody who got them from us gets them, how a lot of people get them. There are some plastic ones I've seen now too starting to come out, but um, we just wanted to point out, we had somebody call us uh, a couple of days ago and say that, well, we forgot to, to tell them about one little nifty thing about these nuke packages. So when you get your bees, of course, you get your uh, nuke, open it up, take your five frames out of it, put it into your hive. You can save these and you can use these to make splits if you want. Temporarily put your uh, frames in here to be able to make splits. Or you can use these, obviously, to transfer your bees around to be able to put your frames in and, and, uh, and carry them. But one little thing is in the front here, uh, they didn't notice until when they did notice, they go, how come nobody told us about this? So we're going to tell you now. There's a little tab opening in the front. So when you put your bees in this, if you make a split, as long as it's not too hot and the bees are in the shade, you can actually open up this little tab here in the front and uh, the bees can come and go from this. So it's kind of a neat little thing. It's not only just for transportation, but you can put them in here for a little bit. Uh, also, I have to apologize because I'm pretty sure I bumped my mic on several occasions with this box. So we're kind of new to this new technology. So sorry, I'll try to quit doing that. You can also use that to catch swarms. If your hive yeah. swarms and you don't have a box or anything, you can use that. That's actually what I used yeah. twice this year already. So yeah, that would be real, real handy. So hang on to those boxes. They are useful if you, if you get them. 
Uh, last but not least, this is a um, email from David. David writes, uh, I purchased a Great Lakes Long Hive and a Nuke from you this spring, and now I'm looking for some advice. So congratulations on becoming a beekeeper this year. Um, he wants to, to have some advice on managing these types of hives. So these Great Lakes Long Hives, um, we sell here, we make and sell here. We can ship them too. So uh, it says he installed the bees and everything was going great. They were building up frames, brood was going strong, honey was being capped and stored, but perhaps it was going a little too well. On Friday when he got home, he came out and just to realize that uh, the bees were in the middle of a swarm. So he was able to catch the swarm in the end. He didn't keep the bees actually because he had already caught a swarm the week before. But uh, his question was, he was sure there was plenty of frames available for the queens and the workers to build out. In the hive, um, six completely open frames for them to work on, and he, so he was confused as to why they swarmed. Uh, it says, I did some digging online this weekend, and it seems the queen will not pass by frames of all honey. Is this true? It makes sense since the open frames were on the other side of the honey frames. I read that in a long hive, I should be adding the frames more in the middle of the hive, the brood area, and inside all of the honey frames to help encourage growth and reduce swarming. Second part of the question was, I'm also hoping you can give me some other pointers while I learn about keeping bees in a long hive. Do you have any books or websites that you can recommend? So first question is going to be, where do I put the deeps, right? And you're correct. In most cases, a queen won't jump over seven frames of honey to keep laying after those. So in the case of a long hive, because you're beekeeping from, from, you're beekeeping from front to back instead of bottom to top, you have to be conscious that if they start loading up eight frames back and putting only honey, that she's not going to, when she runs out of those first frames, she's not going to jump over all those and start laying a whole new batch in the back. And that might actually jump out a swarm even though there are empty frames in the back. So you're right, when you add those frames to long hives, add your empty frames where the brood stops and the honey starts. That way they can start to draw that uh, wax out on those and they can determine on whether or not they want to put honey in it or whether or not they want to make brood. Um, you could also, if you're really worried about it, you could also take frame and put one of them right in the very front. That's almost most definitely going to be brood. So if you're concerned about that, but you know, when the queen runs out of spaces to lay, that's one of the triggers for a swarm. And they very well could run out of space, even though you have empty frames, if you keep adding them to the back and they're starting to load up honey. So you're right, good, good location, that's where you should be putting the frames, is right in the middle. Uh, the, the second part of your question for your long hives, for your books and your websites. Unfortunately, we aren't aware of a whole lot of places to find out information about long hives. Long hives are not a new design. Uh, people have been using them for a very long time, successfully. Uh, some people like them, some people don't like them. But uh, there's not a whole lot of information. We don't know of any books that do actually exist, um, nor there are there a lot of websites. You can find YouTube videos uh, from other people who are talking about long hives. Sometimes they call them Tanzanian hives. Um, but they're making theirs for their own backyard and so it's a little bit harder because a lot of those dimensions are not necessarily all the same. Uh, the ones course that we make are all the Langstroth dimensions except for obviously the length in order to fit all those in. So all the Langstroth parts and pieces fit ours. Not always the case. Um, so unfortunately we don't have anything really to recommend you. If we do come up with some we'll make sure we post a couple of links down below so if we uh, uh, happen to come across some I'll take a look a little bit harder and see if I can find some that I can recommend we will. Otherwise stay tuned to some of our channels, uh, our videos on our channels because um, we will be doing other videos as we work on our, our uh, long hives too. So. All right, we said it was going to be a short video. It was a short video. So we appreciate you stopping in, checking in. We're sorry it took so long. We had a little mic glitch with one of our mics, but we got it fixed, and now we're back up and running. So uh, make sure you remember to like, subscribe, and share. Uh, by liking our video, you let others know that there's some good content, and hopefully they'll pop over and read it, or excuse me, uh, listen to it too, and watch it and learn something also. Uh, please jump on our Facebook page for Great Lakes Bee Supply. You can just search that. We also have a group, a uh, Facebook group for beekeeping TV. You can check that there too. Please ask us questions. Please send us videos. Comment on what you like, what you don't like. Uh, and give us some feedback. It, it really helps us out a lot. So thanks again for tuning in, and uh, we hope we see you next time.